Prime Minister Skerritt delivers a tax-free budget outlining how the CIP is run and saving small businesses from VAT as the threshold is raised. The Forestry Division promotes increased forest cover for Dominica and government unveils a plan to increase monthly stipend for seniors over 70 by 50% and provide health insurance for infants of single mothers. I am Julian Morris with the Channel 5 News. The details coming up. First up, no new taxes included in the 2016-2017 national budget presented by Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt on Tuesday. But it's one in which the Prime Minister and Minister for Finance went to great lengths to give an account of the funds collected under the Citizenship by Investment Programme and how that money is managed and disbursed. The Prime Minister noted that the CIP had become a significant non-tax revenue earner for the state. He said it was under this administration that a separate unit of government was established to administer the CIP programme. It is under this government that a decision was made to identify separately the projects on the PSIP, which are funded from resources raised under the program. These projects are given a code of 115 in the printed estimates and are easy to reference. Government's contribution to the financing of a number of major development projects has come from a citizenship by investment program. This includes the geothermal development project, the counterpart financing for lots one and two of the Canefield to Melvin Hall road, um, road projects, and in more recent times, many of the post-tropical storm Erica rehabilitation works, including the current rehabilitation of Douglas Charles Airport. It is under this government that greater structure was given to the program by defining clearly the two streams of the program, one by which resources were raised to finance public sector investment program, and the other by which foreign direct investment is targeted for private sector investment. The Prime Minister says government has expanded the program and employed a marketing strategy to attract the best and most credible applicants. And it is under this government that we have increased our revenue earnings to over $200 million in the last financial year. <laughs> Madam Speaker, we may ask, why is the citizenship by investment program so important? The response is clear. In an age where development financing is dwindling and the process of gaining access to available financing is becoming more onerous, governments the world over must find credible ways and means of raising financing for development programs. The alternative would be to increase domestic taxes and or contract additional loans. In the last fiscal year, Mr. Skerritt says a concerted effort was made to increase the revenues earned under the CIP program. Members of the government at both the policy and technical levels participated in several conferences around the world, particularly in Middle East, Europe, North America and Asia, to promote this program. Madam Speaker, the resources from the Synergy by Investment Program are deposited with the National Bank of Dominica, the NBD, and the Royal Bank of Canada, RBC. The only signatories to these accounts are the Financial Secretary, the Budget Controller, the Accountant General, and the Senior Examiner and Corporate Service Officer in the Citizenship by Investment Unit. Drawdown from the bank accounts must be done by two of the officers so that no one officer can undertake any transaction on his or her own. The account of the National Bank had a balance of $2.4 million at the end of June 2015 and a balance of $19.1 million at the end of June 2016. Inflow for the fiscal year 2015-2016 was $118.1 million. The account of the RBC had a balance of $13 million at the end of June 2015. The balance at the end of June 2016 was $143.2 million. 
Channel 5 News will bring you a further breakdown of the various programs and initiatives which stand to receive a boost from the CIP funds in another newscast. Meantime, Tuesday's $680 million budget to dub the building a more resilient Dominica was delivered against the background of the impact of Tropical Storm Erica, which affected over 90% of the country's GDP. The Prime Minister said government was not daunted by the task of rebuilding more resilient infrastructure, but expressed hope that Dominicans were taking stock of the global environment in which this rebuilding was taking place. Mr. Skerritt pointed to the impact of terrorism and mass migration, as well as the lingering effects of the global financial meltdown, all of which he said were relevant to the budget presentation. The budget speaks to prospects for economic growth with specific attention on agriculture and other sectors. The Minister for Finance announced the intention of placing the national abattoir under the management of the private sector. Also, increasing the VAT tax threshold, which would reduce the number of small businesses required to pay VAT. There are also incentives for the hotel sector, an additional million dollars for the World Creole Music Festival budget this year, increased allowances for seniors over 70, and health insurance for infants of struggling single mothers. Channel 5 News will bring you details of these and other provisions of the 2016-2017 national budget in our news throughout this week. The House of Assembly has been adjourned to 10 o'clock Wednesday morning. And due to poor quality audio, we apologize for not being able to bring you or carry excerpts from the President's address. We'll certainly attempt to do so as soon as we can rectify that problem. Let's move on now to the courts where Magistrate Bernard Paquette has again denied bail to Elrado Ducre, Craig Christian and Akim Francis, all charged with the conspiracy to rob Jewelers International almost two months ago. The prosecution objecting to bail told the court the sole ground of objection is the fact that the men, if granted bail, will obstruct justice and hinder the recovery of the items, meaning the Rolex watches, and interfere with the witnesses. The prosecution asked that bail be further denied because of what they describe as sensitive information which they cannot divulge in open court. However, lawyers for the accused men say the onus was on the prosecution to establish the allegations they are making. They say the police have done extensive searches and are yet to come up with anything and hence their client ought to be granted bail. Zina Mordaya, Darius Jones, Joshua Francis, Glenn Duker and Peter Aline are the various lawyers in the matter. Inspector Michael Loda is representing the prosecution and in response he explained that the defense had a golden opportunity to hear of the sensitive matters. He said all they had to request was that the court be cleared and the matter be held in camera. In his ruling, Magistrate Pat Paquette said the court would deny bail and the matter would be further reviewed in 30 days time. And three Chinese nationals who are charged with theft of over 100,000 EC dollars from the National Bank of Dominica have complained to Magistrate Bernard Paquette that the conditions at the Stock Farm prison where they are housed on remand are not very good. Andrea Louis has more. The men appeared in court on Monday, 25th July 2016 for remand and asked that the matter be expedited in order for them to return to China. Speaking through a court-appointed interpreter, one of the men said, and I quote, sleep is not well in the prison. We need a speedy trial to go back home, end quote. They complain that they have had no interaction with the Chinese embassy in Dominica since their incarceration. But prosecution told the court that the Chinese embassy was informed of the arrest of the men. Another one told the court that while they had committed a crime, they need the process to trial to be much faster. He complained of not getting enough food. Another shared complaints of the space in his prison cell, which he described as small. Open quote, we have our human rights also, even if we have committed an offense. We get only one hour recreation. I need to see a doctor because I am not well, end quote. The magistrate ordered that he see a doctor but told him that, open quote, Dominica is the worst place to be arrested as a foreigner and be placed in jail, end quote. Their lawyer is expected to further assist them in matters of food and other issues. Wayne Norde is representing them, but he was absent. Peter Aline held on for him. You are watching Channel 5 News. A little encouragement goes a long way for cancer survivors and their families. Thanks for staying with us. Dominica's draft policy to co come under review as the country continues its efforts to retain and, re and rebuild or build its forest cover. Andrea Louis reports.
Director of Forestry told Channel 5 News that while the country has an enviable percentage of forest cover compared to some other Caribbean islands, the division would like to see this increase to provide better protection for Dominica. We have a draft forest policy which has been sitting around for a while now and one of the, the, the themes in there is that we have a, a no net loss of forest, meaning that while we understand that for development um, we would of necessity have to clear certain lands but the whole idea is that, for instance, if you clear a land of trees for you to plant, for you, for you to put down your house, then you should plant, try to, to plant a few trees, some of the trees that you are, you know, some, and it's, it's for many different purposes. For, for, to ensure that your soil, you have, have good soil, for good, clean, fresh air. Farmers, for instance, we, 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 we tend to, we want to promote agroforestry so that when farmers are clearing the field for farming, that they do not clear fair all the, the entire land, but they especially have a buffer of trees which would serve also as windbreaks, you know, to prevent, help prevent soil erosion, etc. Burton noted that though a growing population directly results in less forest cover, that has not been the case in Dominica. He commented that discussions on the national land use policy reflect the national level of awareness on the importance of the country's forests. We involve in a lot of the consultations taking place and we give our inputs as much as possible. Um, we, so it's a process that is going on and, and we're contributing as every other um, sector in the, in the country towards the, the national land use policy. From what is um, being proposed, I mean, there, there will, there's a strong emphasis for, for instance, um, certain areas around um, river, setting buffers around, on, around certain rivers, etc. Um, to ensure that you know, we don't lose some of our rivers. We have, protection of some of our wetlands. You would expect with more increasing population and, and, and settlements, etc., that we'll have lost a lot more forests as the years progress, which normally is the case. We estimate we still have about 65% of our, our land um, um, forested, and we really like to have more. And cancer survivors here are being motivated to remain hopeful in the face of adversity. The Dominica Cancer Society held a candlelight service at Deliverance Baptist Church over the weekend. The keynote speaker there, Pastor Dave Serra, impressed on his audience a message of light. If there is something we all need, it's hope. When there is no hope, the soul will fail. But when there is hope, we we'll look forward to the future. And I was truly blessed by the two, by the two testimonies that will share here this evening. Because these two individuals did one thing. They told us that there is hope. In spite of the disease, there is hope. It does not matter how beautiful you are or how healthy you are. Cancer cuts us down and says to us how vulnerable we are as human beings. But in our state of despair, we can look to God's word and there is hope. Pastor Sarah advises his audience to maintain a strong mind despite personal difficulties. But there are people when adversity hits them, they turn away from God. They get angry at God. Yeah. If you are so loving, if you are so kind, why did you allow this to happen to me? Some turn to alcohol. Some turn to devious behaviors. Some think that others ought to feel what they are going through. But I want to encourage us this afternoon. Let's be focused. Let's be focused. Yeah. Because while the threat may be real and the threat may be there, it's not the end of the road. Former police superintendent Yvonne Alexander is a cancer survivor. You know, I am so grateful that I live to be free sports. Yeah. You know, if I never lived another day, I would be happy, I would be satisfied. Mm. And you know, wow. this, it is just what it is. I am just extremely grateful. At the end of the day, all of us are just passing through this earth. And I think the advantage cancer survivors have is that we know our mortality is right in front of us and because of that we just cannot lose the sight of that light the creator and and the spirit of god in us in other news in its ninth edition this year the via think summer series is realizing a decline in numbers Chief Executive Officer of VF Inc., Dr. Valde Henry, remains unfazed. She sees an increase in summer programs around the island as a contributing factor. When we started nine years ago, basically there was the 
the library program, the youth division summer school, and maybe one or two other um, summer schools. Right now, you can't keep up with the number of summer schools that there are or summer programs. Dr. Henry says the group is also drafting ideas to enhance the program come 2017, the 10th year. We are planning for the 10th year because there has been a call for going to two weeks as well as a call for a sleep-in camp. Um, we are taking on board the sleep-in camp. I think at first we may be run it just for one year and then afterwards do the two years. We'll see how that works. And so the big, big year, 10th year, should be really be big. Um, in fact, we have already started planning for the 10th year. Um, a, a small committee has already been put in place. That's news. Your sports highlights next with Kenny Williams. First up, West Indies and Jamaica Talawa's all-rounder Andre Russell has made his first public comment since being charged by the Jamaica Anti-Doping Commission with committing an anti-doping whereabouts violation earlier this year for having allegedly missed three drug tests in a 12-month period. Preparing for Talawa's final two games of the Caribbean Premier League, Russell says when on the field he remains focused on the game. However, off the field, the reality of the situation is stressing and is depressing. Meantime, the Jamaica Gleaner revealed that Russell's lawyer claimed that at the hearing of an independent panel on July 20, that his client had received correspondence from JADCO for two incidents, January to March 2015 and July to September 2015, for allegedly missing the out-of-competition doping test. In the meantime, Russell says he's focused on helping the first place Talawas secure a second TPL title after winning it in 2013. Talawas round out their league stage by playing St. Lucia Zooks twice on July 30 and 31. Heading into the playoffs, winning either game will book them a spot in the finals. Next up, Dominica won their first game against St. Vincent and the Grenadines in the women's volleyball competition at the CBN Winlot Winward Island School Games. The girls won the match in straight sets, final scores 25-19, 25-14 and 25-20. Meantime, Dominica went down to St. Vincent and the Grenadines three goals to one in the men's football competition and Dominica beat St. Vincent and the Grenadines 81-63 in the boys' basketball. In cricket, Australia led day one of their test against Sri Lanka by 51 runs on Tuesday. Sri Lanka batted first and scored 117 all out in 34.2 overs. D. D. Silva scored 24, Kosal Perua 20, and Lakshan Sandankan 19. Josh Hazelwood took 3 for 10 and Nathan Lyon 3 for 12. Australia in reply scored 66 for 2. Stephen Smith scored 28 not out and Osman Kawaja 28 not out for Australia. Meantime, England ended their second test against Pakistan with a 330-run win on Monday. Joe Root and Alistair Cook gave England a great start when they scored 254 and 105 respectively to help their team reach 589 for 8 declared in the first innings. Pakistan replied with 198 all out with no Pakistani batsman topping Miss Baulak's 52. Batting a second time, England declared on 173 for 1. Alistair Cook struck 76 not out and Joe Root 71 not out. Set 565 to win, Pakistan were bowled out for 230. 34. Mohamed Hafiz scored 42, while Assad Shafiq assisted with 39. Moving on to football, going into the last week of matches in the Fast Cash Harlem Football League, four teams in Zone A and Zone B are still in the race to qualify as the top teams from each zone move to the semi-finals. In Zone A, 767 Young Ballers and Rosalie Bay Charlotte Villers have five points each with Burt Motors Young Stars and Club Blue Beer next with four points. 767 Young Ballers and Rosalie Bay Resort Charlotte Villers can qualify automatically by winning their respective games, which would take them to eight points. However, a loss or draw gives Burt Motors Young Stars and Club Luby a chance to knock out the other teams if they win their respective games. Meantime, in Zone B, a similar scenario looms. Aeropost Dutch United topped the zone with seven points and one game left. Daddy Chess Bath Road Ambassadors is in second on six points with all games played. Digicel Newtown Juvenile Football Academy is next on four points and Malta India Icons three. 
In Rounders News, there were wins for KFC Mafia Battlers, Vikings Reformers, Tremors, and Max Roy Royal Challengers in the 2016 Giant Malt Rounders League. KFC Mafia Battlers crushed Point Michel by 365 runs. Battlers took first to knock and scored 623 for two. Egberto Xavier scored 179 not out. Ashma Atador, 133 not out, and Corinne John Luis, 119 not out. Point Michel replied with 258 for eight. Carla Walls struck 65 not out, and Shanika John Baptist, 40 not out. In another match, Max Roy Royal Challengers bested Penville Sixers by nine wickets. Final scores Penville, 146 all out, Challengers, 150 for two. Meantime, 56 runs separated a winning Tremors from a losing Galleon Heat Wave. Tremors finished on top with 257 for seven, while Heat Wave contended with 201 all out. And Viking Reformers defeated Stowe and Co. Hard Hitters by eight wickets. Final scores reformers 308 for three hard hitters 305 all out finally in sports we can tell you that arizona boys defeated spartans two goals to one and Simon football club won over get youth all-stars by default in action from the ttw beach football tournament the games continue this weekend that's all the sporting highlights for now i am kenny williams be sure to join us tomorrow Up next, your weather forecast. Hello, good evening. Welcome to your weather. I'll be your presenter for this evening, Farah Rock Career. Let's take a look now at earlier infrared satellite imagery. Today, weak and stable conditions due to the passage of a tropical wave produce generally cloudy skies across the eastern Caribbean. Earlier visible satellite imagery showed low clouds associated with these unstable conditions across the eastern Caribbean. Radar imagery of this afternoon indicated scattered shower activity across the Lesser Antilles. The weather tonight is expected to be partly cloudy to cloudy with scattered showers and similar conditions can be expected tomorrow. Partly cloudy to cloudy skies with some scattered showers. The marine conditions tomorrow will be moderate and waves are expected to be up to 7 feet. Let's take a look now at the weather for the rest of the week. Similar conditions can be expected for the three-day period. Partly cloudy to cloudy skies with some scattered showers and maximum temperatures picking up to 32 degrees Celsius and relatively breezy conditions expected for the three-day period as well. Tomorrow, the rest of the Caribbean can expect similar conditions. Partly cloudy to cloudy skies with scattered showers and maximum temperatures of up to 32 degrees Celsius expected for most of the islands. On the international scene, thunderstorm activity expected for the cities of Caracas and Beijing. The city of New York will enjoy some clear skies and partly cloudy skies for Miami and London can expect some showers tomorrow. The sun will rise tomorrow at 5.46 a.m. and will set at 6.37 p.m. Please remember we are in hurricane season. Feel free to visit our website at weather.gov.dm or call the weather hotline at 447-5555. Join us tomorrow evening for your next weather broadcast. Thank you. And to end the news, the headlines again. Prime Minister Scar delivers a tax-free budget outlining how the CIP is run and saving small businesses from VAT by raising the threshold. The Forestry Division promotes increased forest cover for Dominica and government unveils a plan to increase monthly stipend for seniors over 70 by 50% and provide health insurance for infants of single mothers. Feel free to contact us at news at mapping2k4.com. You can also access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the production team, I am Julian Morris and to all our viewers around the world, thanks for watching.